Hi everyone, welcome back to part three of Clone Gary. All right, happy to play first. Hmm. We have one scry land, but I don't think it's enough because we're gonna have to hit a lot of lands in a row to get up to Grey Merchant. We don't have a lot of early plays either, so let's mulligan. Okay, this seems reasonable. We'll keep it. And I think the second spark double makes the most sense to pitch. And I will just run out the Order of Midnight. Oh, got him. Nothing dressable here. Now that we've drawn the Burglar Rat, that is a better play, I believe, than the Order of Midnight. Try to get the additional value out of the order by buying a creature back. Alright, let's see if we might be playing a mono black aggressive deck. I... I don't think we can race them outright. So we have two main options here. I am going to shock. So it's going to be either the Midnight Reaper or Quasi Duplicate. I'm gonna go with Midnight Reaper. That way we can trade off a Burglar Rat for one of the Gutter Bones and still draw a card off of it. Okay, they've got a Midnight Reaper of their own. Still going to make this trade though. Okay, Cavalier of Night will be good in a couple turns. So here we have the option of Spark Doubling to make a big Midnight Reaper or Order of Midnight plus Burglar Rat. And I like that option better. We'll put them down the card they just drew and give ourselves another opportunity to draw a new card. And I'm going to keep this Midnight Reaper back. Um, potentially I want to block both of their creatures here. Okay. They're going to be able to buy back these Gutter Bones. But I still want to draw the card off of the Burglar Rat. So I am going to trade it. And we're finding quite a few Burglar Rats these days. Bit of an infestation. Oh. And our opponent is all about the rats, too. This is a uh, pretty unique matchup we've got. Okay. Let's see what's on top. Another Order of Midnight. And we're kind of in this grindy value matchup, so I'm going to keep that there. And we can Burglar Rat Order of Midnight, or we can Spark Double the Midnight Reaper. I kind of like the idea of spark doubling a Cavalier of Night, so I think I'm going to hold out for that. We're just going to play the Burglar Knight out. I'll probably discard the Gutter Bones. And we'll also play out the Order of Midnight here. And we can start getting in with the Order of Midnight. I wonder if it makes sense to now attack with the Midnight Reaper. So we've built up a decent amount of card advantage. I think I am going to hold it back, however. And my plan is to Cavalier of Night destroying probably the Midnight Reaper. I feel like the Piper of the Swarm is a ways away from going off. And we'll have a chance to... Okay, so I was going to say we'll have a chance to kill it by doubling the Cavalier. Do we want to just trade Midnight Reapers now? I think I like this. Hmm. No, I take it back. Uh, I like having the Midnight Reaper to generate us value while they do not have it. And by being able to sacrifice the Burglar Rat to the Cavalier of Night, this is going to put us in a huge advantageous position. So I think it makes sense to do this first. That way, if they do decide to block with the Piper of the Swarm for some reason, they are not drawing a card off of it. So we'll sacrifice the Burglar Rat and get rid of the Midnight Reaper. 
And hopefully the lifelink on the Cavalier will allow us to make up some of the damage that we're taking from Midnight Reaper here. Go ahead and scry. Yeah, and I'll keep the spark doubles. A lot of clones of Cavalier of Night are just very powerful. Get him with both of these. Okay, so drawing another card here off of the Midnight Reaper. Alright, and they are hellbent. They've got no cards left in hand. So, how do we maximize this turn? We have double quasi-duplicate if we want it. We also have spark double plus quasi-duplicate. It feels most important to get rid of the Priest and the Piper of the Swarm. Let's start with Spark Double. And I think we want to Spark Double the Midnight Reaper with this first one. And now we're going to quasi-duplicate our Cavalier. Sacrificing the original Midnight Reaper to draw two cards and destroy probably the Piper of the Swarm. Yeah, let's go ahead and sacrifice this. Okay, and then next turn they are going to be able to use Priest of the Forgotten God to get rid of one of our creatures. Go ahead and attack in with this Cavalier. So if they use Priest first to sacrifice the two Gutter Bones, I will get rid of our tapped Cavalier. And that will allow us to bring back we want a Burglar Rat or another Midnight Reaper. I think our life total is high enough that we can afford to bring the Midnight Reaper back. not going to be particularly effective against us. Go ahead and pitch the Swamp. Okay, so a lot of good options here again. I think it starts just with an attack. I'm debating playing the Nightmare Shepherd out first. Actually, I quite like this. We're going to Nightmare Shepherd first, then attack. If they want to get rid of the Midnight Reaper, we can buy it back. And then I am likely to Spark Double Copying Cavalier to get rid of the Priest of the Forgotten Gods. And that should really put an end to their play. Okay, so a uh, pretty smooth game one there. Against Mono Black, how do we want to adjust? Well, it feels like Cry of the Carnarian is going to be spectacular against their deck specifically. And I think the two Tyrant Scorns are also important to bring in. In terms of cards to cut, hmm. Well, I like Timurat because it allows us to exile cards from their yard, like Gutter Bones. It feels to me like we can go down on our clone effects because 
Again, this is likely not to be a game that drags out super long. And other cards that we can go down on, I think probably the Burglar Rats. They're usually the least impactful. So let's go minus three of the Burglar Rats, bring one of the Quasi Duplicates back in, and run this. I like the quasi duplicate over the spark double just because it is a mana cheaper and we do get to cast it twice okay um so a little on the slow side but we have tyrant score so it's a keep and then we have our top end as well here i'm going to fetch a black mana to make sure we can cast ayara on curve if we draw it Gutterbone's not the ideal Tyrant scoring target. Hmm, Burglar, okay. So what do we most want to pitch here? Hmm, this is a tough one. I think I'm going to get rid of Atris. Even though Atris is a lot of value, I like the large flying body in Nightmare Shepherd and the ability to replicate these effects. So here, I am going to shock. It's pretty close being up against an aggressive deck, but I think the value in being able to Tyrant Scorn makes it worthwhile. We're going to allow them to hit first though. Okay, and in response, we'll destroy the gutter bones. And yeah, we have uh, made their duresses look a little bit foolish in the, these two games. Okay. Let's run out the swamp. And we are going to be able to start chaining our way up to Gary. Okay, they have their own AR. Which will allow them to draw a card off the Burglar Rat. As long as Nightmare Shepherd can survive this turn, I think we're in a really good spot. If the Nightmare Shepherd dies, we might be in a little bit of trouble. And this is a nice combo they have. Um, they can play out Gutter Bones, sacrifice it, buy it back, and replay it. I think actually my next turn is likely to be playing out Cavalier of Night. That would make our Grey Merchant much, much better. The only problem is I do not want to sacrifice the Nightmare Shepherd. Hmm. This definitely seems like the critical turn here. And I would love to get Ayara down, but it seems like a really inefficient use of our mana. I'm actually going to attack with the Nightmare Shepherd. And sacrifice it to Cavalier of Night. This does not feel good, but I don't want to let them just continue to draw cards and go off with Ayara. And I think it's worth it at this point. And then our next two turns can be getting Ayara down for us, and then playing out the Grey Merchant. Uh, I see no reason not to block the gutter bones here. And they do have another Ayara. So the question is, do we Ayara first and then Gary? Let's start out with a Scry. The swamp on the bottom. 
And I think we do want to try to maximize the amount of devotion when Gary comes down. And this will do an additional damage just for the creature entering the battlefield. They are going to be able to play the gutter bones combo here with Idara. I think overall our cards are more impactful than theirs though. Okay, let's run out the Grey Merchant. And unfortunately we have no three drops or lower to get back with Cavalier of Night. Hmm. If we attack with both, they block Cavalier and we put them to six. That does not seem like the way forward, however. So I think unfortunately we have to just stay back and hope to draw something impactful on the coming turns. Another Nightmare Shepherd would do it. But as it stands, they are drawing an additional card per turn, so we'll need something pretty soon. Okay, Piper of the Swarm. And a Knight of Eden of Legion. So one thing I'm considering is sacrificing something to IR to draw an additional card here. Unfortunately, we lose a lot of our devotion in doing that, and even a copy of Grey Merchant would not be lethal. If we did draw one of our three quasi-duplicates though, that would be good enough. I think I want to wait one more turn to see if we can just find a Grey Merchant off the top. Ooh, Cry is a pretty nice one here. So, let's start out with Cry and then attack in. And I'm going to hold on to this land, because if we do draw quasi-duplicate, we want something to pitch to jumpstart it. So at least we got them off of that gutter bones combo. Oof, Liliana is spectacular. Let us march into battle and make new comrades. Putrid, but effective. And again, I think I want to hold off on drawing the card here. You can always see what we draw first and then use it as well. Hmm. Okay. I can't survive too much longer with this going on. If they make a sacrifice two creatures we're in trouble, I think we have to go for this. So let's get rid of the Cavalier of Night. Oh man, we're a little bit flooded this game, unfortunately. So at this point, I think if Liliana makes both players sacrifice two creatures, this game is unfortunately over for us. They have some nice synergies going on. it's coming now and there's actually not a way out of this for us at this point their life total is too high so we'll go ahead and go to game three is there anything we really want to change no this looks like a pretty good setup definitely playing first 
And yeah, this looks like a, a really great opener. We've got a ton of early interaction, a way to draw additional cards, and one of our clone effects. Now we just need to find a little bit of our top end. And I believe it makes sense to start off by scrying. And Atrus is great value, so we'll keep him. Got plenty of turn three plays, so even if for some reason we do miss. All right. And uh, they are set on duress. Uh, it did sort of have a target that time, although only got rid of half of the card. All right, and it looks like they're stuck on one land here. So maybe uh, a little bit of a shaky keep over there. Go ahead and get a black source again for Ayara potential. have a bunch of gutter boneses. Go ahead and I think here yeah we still want the black source in case we draw it on. Alright so we have a couple different options here. I'm heavily leaning towards just playing out a 2-3 murderous rider. It feels a little bit better than even using it to kill one of them as it can just be a wall. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Effectively, this takes him off of both gutter bones, unless they have something else. Okay. Try the Carnarium would be a really phenomenal draw here. As it stands, I think I would like to just play out Atris. This should help us continue to hit our land drops and give us a little bit more action as well. And certainly if uh, they show us Cry of the Carnarium, we will jump all over that one. And then hopefully the Cavalier of Night can really help put our life total at a safe number. Okay, so we're being shown Grey Merchant, and we do have the clone effect. We don't have a fifth land, however. And I think I actually want to just take the two cards. And we have ways to buy Grey Merchant back, like the Orders of Midnight. Hmm. So do we want to trade off Atris? I don't think so. I think I'd rather at least sacrifice Atris to the Cavalier of Night. Although, does that make sense? If I'm going to sacrifice it anyway to destroy something, maybe I should just trade it with one of these now. I suspect they may play a better creature here though, so I'm going to hold off to destroy this 3-drop that they're about to play. And there is the Midnight Reaper. Okay. Let's first get in. We also have some other options. Uh, we can Tyrant Scorn plus our own Midnight Reaper. Feels like it's safest just to do this though. Okay. And then we have a lot of different options next turn. It really depends on what the board looks like. <laughs> Alright, they did find a target for this duress. We really don't have a ton of non-creature spells. Okay, and a Burglar Rat. I think I just want to exchange a Yarrix Fenlurker for that. Let's scry. Ooh, Nightmare Shepherd's an excellent draw. Go ahead and run out both the Midnight Reaper 
and the RX gun marker here. And the Falmire Knight is going to hold off our Cavalier of Night. But once we land the Nightmare Shepherd, I may just attack in with it. Okay, so likely be killing the Priest of the Forgotten Gods this turn. That does seem like one of the ways that this can get out of control. Unfortunately, we can't double spell here with Nightmare Shepherd, but I think just getting rid of the Priest before they're able to use it makes a lot of sense. And then I think I actually want to attack in with the Fen Lurker here. I will allow us to draw an additional card. Alternatively, I can quasi-duplicate. No, I don't want to pitch the Nightmare Shepherd, however. So, let's offer to trade the Fen Lurker. Okay, they are not interested. And we'll just run out the Midnight, the Murderous Rider. And they're quite a lot of mana away from something really um, impactful like Liliana. Oh, Order of Midnight. Just what the doctor ordered. Gary is likely to be coming down pretty soon. And once he comes down, we've got a couple clone effects as well. All right. So I think it starts actually with a Spark Double. Or sorry, with a Nightmare Shepherd. And then we'll return Gary from our graveyard to our hand. And I th I'm actually considering attacking with this Cavalier. I can copy it with the Nightmare Shepherd, blow up the Fen Lurker to get their last card out of their hand and bring that back as well. Seems pretty good to me. So they might just chump block here, but I'm certainly happy to gain four life. Okay, and uh, next turn the fun begins. Hopefully we can hit one more land. That we can even play out the Order of Midnight first. Okay, well... No reason to hold off on this. Let's drain them first. And hit them with the Nightmare Shepherd for the victory. Alright, that was a lot of fun. Um, some difficult games to navigate there, but we are officially 2-1 with Clone Gary. I hope you'll join us for the next round. And as always, if you like this, please consider a like and subscribe below. Bye.